Hey everybody, welcome to The Warp, I'm Jack Rita. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a special version of Cosmic Encounter that I created. It's called Lovecraftian Encounter. And in it, we use these special alien sheets where actually each player is a different cult of one of the great old ones. And you're still playing Cosmic Encounter, so you're ultimately trying to get to five foreign colonies. But there are a few little minor differences to how the game proceeds. So at the start of the game, we, uh, we gave everybody one of these uh, little system sheets. Uh, this was also used uh, if you were playing the old classic alien terrorist where you were planting bombs on different... Uh, different planets and different player systems, uh, but it was also for something that I called uh, constellations, where specific planets and different systems uh, needed to be uh, occupied. So for Lovecraftian Encounter, you would mark your home system, you would mark three of your home planets, and then you would mark three of the planets belonging to other players, and they could be in all in the same system, or you could spread them out however you wanted. Uh, and these corresponded to how your alien sheet would work. So if we take a look at one of them, so we've got here the Cult of Azathoth, and in it you've got an what's called an internal power and an external power. And the way it worked was as long as you continue to occupy the three planets in your home system that you have indicated secretly on your sheet, and these were kept secret, uh, you had use of your internal power. So for Azathoth, uh, whenever you're involved in encounter as a main player or an ally, your ships in the warp count to your side's total. And you'll meet, you may increase your total by sacrificing your ships not in the encounter. So, yikes, that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. And all of these aliens are a little bit out there. But once you had occupied the three planets that were foreign colonies it would activate your external power. So this is going to help you ultimately get to the uh, end game there. So as a main player, you may sacrifice a ship of any player that shares a colony with you or has a colony in your system once per encounter. So one of the other things about it was not only did you need to have five um, foreign colonies, but uh, you had to have a certain number of ships in the warp, uh, either yours or the group a as a whole, and played around with a couple of different variations on that. But that was the point of Lovecraftian Encounter. Uh, so you had uh, you had basically each alien sheet was two powers, and um, one you would keep for as long as you had those specific planets in your home system, and one you could activate if you could manage to get specific uh, foreign colonies. And because everybody is secretly writing down where they are, you have no idea which planets um, the other players are interested in going after. So when somebody points the hyperspace gate, for instance, at any planet in the blue system, here you can see the purple player doesn't really care about necessarily getting any one of those. Now, it'll certainly help them get to five, but... Um, yeah, it doesn't really help them get their alien power. So it did have a little bit of an impact on alliances, which I like. Not everybody was necessarily jumping on board the offensive side when um, they're like, oh, you know, I don't know. I'd much rather go after this other one. And so that that's what I found interesting about it. And I've since uh, kept this concept uh, that um, I use for constellations. And I've got a set of constellation cards where they're already predetermined, and uh, I'll show those in a separate video. But that's Lovecraftian Encounter. Uh, for me, you know, I'm a big Lovecraft file. I, I really enjoy that. I love all those Lovecraftian games. And um, so, yeah, I was looking for a way to inject some of that into Cosmic Encounter, and uh, and that was the result. So I may do an updated version of these that's a little more Fantasy Flight friendly. Um, certainly bring it into Tabletop Simulator where it'll be a lot easier to have those components and uh, integrate them with the existing ones so that I don't have to make yet another uh, homemade set in order to play it in real life. So that's it for this one. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, sure, let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.